Partly because I have lived as an adult and a reporter through the last 40 years. I saw this happen little by little, brick by brick. But to put it too simply, the idea of solidarity, that is, we're all in this together, one way or another, as a country, as a community, um, was disassembled. I mean, literally taken down. And, and that could be a historical process that was inevitable as the country got more prosperous or as, or as different industries ran into problems and they had to cut costs, so where do you go? You, you, you squeeze the workers or the community. I mean, I, I don't think we have to answer that. The fact is it happened. And I mean by that that America went through the crisis of the Great Depression in the 1930s. The New Deal constructed a lot of of social remedies that were also economic remedies. Got the country started back again in a in a prosperous, growing manner. It in literally invested in new industries that became the future: aircraft, uh, petrochemicals, all of the uh, electronics. All of those things came out of an active government investment program. Um, in the post-war prosperity after World War II, um, there was this great sort of sensibility, partly because we had come through war, a, a, a dead serious war for survival, that, okay, everybody needs some kind of reward for the sacrifice, in a sense. So you had the GI Bill. You had active uh, government involvement in spreading home ownership as broadly as possible. You had the beginnings, really, that came out of that war sensibility of the civil rights movement and reforms, and you had the, the extension of the New Deal a bit. My own theory is that the, that the breakdown began when, in a, in a sort of the hubris of success, American economy and government uh, overextended, reached too far, went to war in Vietnam and got into a financial condition which made us less successful than we might have been. A long list of things happened. And that opened the door for business and finance having been regulated and held back from its most animal-like instincts <laughs> for 30 or 40 years decided to break out. And you could see that starting in the early 1970s. By the late 70s, they were going head to head with organized labor. They were attacking federal taxes and federal programs frontally. The city of Washington, modern Washington, was built on their money, put, putting lobbyists and think tanks around town to influence government. And they were also quite unprepared for the global competition, which the U.S. in a way had spawned. We started this global system with good intentions to get the world growing again. And now, 10, 20 years later, the Japanese and the Germans and others come back making better products than ours. Um, and that hardened the conservative impulse, which is if we could just get the government off our backs and just break up solidarity, the solidarity of the people, then we'll be okay. And they were. <laughs> it was the people who didn't come through that so well. And, and I mean, to put it bluntly, the Milton Friedman idea of what an economy should do, which is virtually nothing except let business do what it does naturally, and uh, you'll therefore be more profitable, and somehow in the end everybody will benefit from that. That started as a, a kind of crackpot idea and it became the ascendant ideology. And it is still ascendant, although I think now its, its contradictions have come home. It didn't deliver what it promised, visibly in this country. It multiplied many social problems. It is still in the process of tearing down those common assets of government and, and uh, social accountability that, uh, that New Deal liberalism created. And, and which most people still want. The politics, I think, in this situation is lagging behind the reality. 